Hey, it's me Alicia with AP Laser and today I'm going to be showing you how to engrave a beautiful winter scene portrait on painted glass. We can jump right into Corel here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a new project. You can name your project whatever is helpful for you. I'm going to go ahead and name this portrait project. And then from here, we can kind of skip all the way down to the sizing. You're just going to go ahead and size that to whatever material you're working with. I'm going to be working with an 8 by 10 piece of glass. And mine is going to be in landscape. You can change that to portrait if that's what yours is going to be. It is really important to make sure your resolution is set to 300 dpi to start. This is really good for portraits. Um, you can load that right into Lightburn. A thousand is what we're going to end up with at the end just to make that a little bit better, but we want to start with that 300 there. We can go ahead and hit OK when everything looks good and you will have that new project opened up here. In another tab, I'm going to go ahead and open up the picture that I want engraved. I've got it saved here, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and hit open here. And then I've got this beautiful picture here and we're going to make a few edits before we bring that into the project file. All I'm going to do is go ahead and separate my subject from the background. Now you could keep this all in one image there, but to make it a little bit easier to see the subjects from the background, we're going to separate those out. You can go ahead and just engrave the subjects without a background. You can add in any background you want um, afterwards, but I'm going to go ahead and just take the subjects out completely. So if we go into image, we have this top tab right here just called Cutout Lab. We're going to go ahead and hit that and you're going to get this new window open up here. We can go ahead and full screen that so it's a little bit easier to work with. And I will say this is much easier to do if you have a graphics tablet of some sort. It'll be really easy to go in there and trace what you need to. I don't have that on hand, but I'll show you just kind of how easy it is. You don't have to get super precise. Um, you know, you can kind of play with it and find what you like there. But I'm going to go ahead. I have the highlighter tool selected here. The nib size is 15. You can kind of play with what you'd like there. I find 15 to be pretty good. And all we're going to do is we're going to start tracing around the subject. Now I like to trace outside of what the subject is because I'm going to go ahead and feather this after I get it out there. And that's going to take a little bit off of the edges here, but we're just going to go ahead and trace around until we get where we want that to be. And again, it doesn't have to be super precise, just getting that kind of border out there. We're going to go ahead and soften things up so it doesn't look quite as scratchy as it will when we first pull it out there. Now, once we have everything kind of outlined here, we can go ahead. I'm going to hit this uh, inside fill tool. We're going to fill that in because we want everything inside there. If you wanted the background instead, you could go ahead and select the outside of it instead. But I want these guys here, so I'm going to make sure that's filled in. You can hit the preview button to see what everything looks like down here. I think that looks pretty good. Obviously, you can see some little mistakes here, but I'll show you how we take care of that here in a second. But I'm happy with this, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. You can see how that cut out everything outside of our subject area. Now what I'm going to do to soften things up so it's not so jagged and kind of crazy looking. If we go to the effects tab up here, we can go to blur and we can find the feather tool. And you can play with this on the sizing here. You don't want to go too crazy big. You can get really kind of crazy results there. But if we turn off the preview, you can see what it looked like before. I click on that and you can see how that softened up and took away a lot of the stuff I didn't want. And now I think I could even go a little bit higher. I'm going to try 25 and see what that looks like. So there's our original. We do the preview button and then there's where it softened everything up. I think that looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then we have our subjects. Now I want to want to select everything on my screen here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to paste that onto my project file. So there we have our subjects ready to be um, played with so that we can start engraving them. And again, we can go in and add a background if you want a background. I think I'm going to just leave the subjects as is, just so you can see how uh, our lasers do with that. Okay, so now that we have our subjects in this tab, we're going to go ahead and size that any size that you want in here. Kind of take these guys and play until you find where you want them to be. I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and kit that there. Once we have our subject size correctly, we're going to go to our adjust tool and we're going to go ahead and hit desaturate. 
That's gonna take all of the color out of the image. It's gonna give you a better idea of what it's gonna look like engraved on your material. And it's just gonna help with the laser processing later on. You can kind of see how things look there. It's still this nice, beautiful image. We just took all of the color out. Now, if we go into our effects tool, the last thing we're gonna wanna do to make sure this is laser ready is we're gonna want to go to sharpen and unsharp mask here. Once you click on that, it's gonna give you three little sliders here to play with. You can kind of see how crazy of a difference that makes already. We turn the preview off, you know, it looks so soft and blurry now compared to what it is going to look like later with that sharpened mask on there. You can play with the sliders to find what looks best. I wouldn't touch threshold. It's nothing you really need to play with. It makes things more complicated than they need to be. So you can go ahead and make sure that's set to zero. And you really just want to play with percentage and radius here. You go ahead. I usually have percentage all the way up to max. On For me, that's 470. And then I take my radius slider and you can play, you know, you see down at the bottom, it doesn't really do much. You can go up to the extreme, you know, 16, that makes it super cartoony. You kind of want to make sure things are just a step below that cartoony level. They're going to look a little weird here, but they're going to look amazing on the laser. This is kind of too cartoony, so we're just going to take it a little bit down. Let's see, 14, still a little too much, I'd say. Let's go down to 12, I think. And I think that looks perfect. Once you have it where you want it to be, you can go ahead and hit OK. And then you should be, that should be your final results there. Now, before we export this for a machine, I want to make it a little bit higher of a resolution so that the laser can see the pixels a little more nicely. So we're gonna go up to image and we're gonna go to resample right here. Now, if I click on that guy, we have that set to the 300 DPI. I'm gonna raise this all the way up to 1000. And that's just gonna make sure the laser sees every little piece of the image. Um, so everything looks nice and crisp in the end. You can see how much bigger that made it. It's still set to that eight by 10 sizing, but it just made everything a little more clear. So once we're ready to export, one thing we wanna make sure is we don't want that background in our image. So we're gonna go ahead and take that background layer and we're just gonna hide it. That way we have that just the subjects that we want to engrave. Now, if we go to file and export, you can also use control key if you're using your hotkeys. Go ahead and get that. Make sure your file is named to whatever you want it to be named. You can hit the export button and we're gonna go ahead and save as flattened and wait for that to load. It will take a little bit of time just because that is such a high resolution image. Once that's loaded in there, make sure everything's set. You don't, shouldn't need to touch anything else. You can just hit okay and wait for that to get onto your desktop. Alternatively, if you're using Photoshop instead of Corel, we can do the processing a little bit differently in here. So if we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the new file just like we did in Corel. We're gonna make sure this is set to the size we want. You can do pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, you know, whatever you're measuring in. I know that inches are what's gonna be easier for me. And I know I have a width of 10 and a height of eight. We're still using that eight by 10 there. You can change the orientation if you need to. That should be good. Everything else should be fine. Except you do want to make sure that your pixels per inch, again, is set to that 300 to start. We're going to go ahead and hit Create. And then we have our blank canvas there. Now, in another tab, we can go ahead and open our image. We're going to go to our desktop and find where that is saved. We're going to open that up. And now selecting the image in Photoshop is a little bit simpler than it is in Corel. Uh, just because they have um, a more advanced selection tool. In Photoshop, you can just go directly up to select and you can do your subject. It'll take a little bit of time to load and you know, there is some patching that you'll have to do in some cases, but I find 99% of the time, it is really, really good at just finding that subject and pulling it out from the background. If I zoom in, you can kind of see where the border is around here. It looks great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it onto my canvas. And you see, it's it was that simple in Photoshop, just pulling that right out. And we can go ahead and size it just like we did in Corel to fit whatever, wherever we want it on our piece. Once we're ready there, we can go up to image, adjustments, and down to desaturate. That's gonna pull the color out just the same as it did in Corel. Once we have that ready, we can go up to our filters, 
sharpen on your sharp mask. Again, this is just the same as it was in Corel, but the amounts are going to need to be played with a little more than they do in Corel as they do vary. You can see, you know, the 15 and the uh, max on here with the amount, it makes it a little more crazy than it does in Corel. So we're just gonna take that radius, we're gonna pull it down. I'd say this is way too cartoony, so we're gonna pull it down to where it's just cartoony. That's, I'd say cartoony, so we're just gonna pull it down just a smidge more, I'd say seven. And I think that looks perfect. Once you have that ready, we're gonna do exactly the same thing as we did in Corel, and we're gonna go ahead and hide that background. So it is just the subject there. Once we have that background removed, we're gonna to go to image and image size and we are going to resample that to the 1000 DPI as we did in Corel. Just go to where that says 300, type in your 1000, hit okay, and it'll take some time to load. But then you see that we're good to go. You can zoom out and see how things look, looks great. And then we can start the exporting process. So we can go to file, export, and we're gonna do export as, Once it loads, you can see how things look on there. We are going to export as a PNG. We're gonna keep everything the size there, looks great. And then you can just go ahead and hit export. And then you can just title it whatever you want. I'm gonna name this one Photoshop Portrait, just to differentiate it. Make sure you can double, triple check that you are as a PNG there, so there will be no background interfering with your subjects. Go ahead and hit save. Again, it'll take a little bit of time to save just because that is such a big project size. And that is why we start with the 300 DPI as opposed to the 1000 we want to end up with, is because the 1000 DPI would just take so long to load. So once we have our image exported, we're going to go ahead and open up Lightburn. Once we have Lightburn open, we're going to find that image on our computer. We have Portrait Project right here. Go ahead and open that. And then it might take a minute to load just because it is, again, that higher resolution. But once it pops in there, you can see where we made the background transparent and there's no white border here to deal with. It's just the subjects that we want to engrave. So everything looks nice and we could send everything just straight to the machine. But I'm gonna go a step further. If you right click on that guy and do adjust image, we can kind of get a better idea of what it's gonna look like with the dithering. Make sure you're set to negative image because we are doing this on a darker material and we want to make sure that the dark stays and the white is what's getting engraved out. You can go ahead and hit invert display here to see what it's going to look like on your material. And you can see that does look really, really nice already. Because we did all the processing beforehand in Corel, it made things really easy in Lightburn. So you can play with the different sliders to your own discretion, but since I made this uh, really nice in Corel beforehand, I'm not gonna play with anything. I am gonna go over to image mode. There are a couple different image modes you can use to process your image. I have found that Jarvis works really well for photos. You can play with halftone as well, but you have to go up to a really, really high DPI to make the halftone look good. And that takes a really, really long time to process just because of how many dots it has to put in there. I'm gonna stick with Jarvis, and between 300 and 360 DPI is where I would stay. If you go any higher, you're gonna get a really blown out image just because the laser's gonna overlap on itself as it goes. And if you go a little bit lower, it's gonna be a little bit pixelated. Sometimes on different materials, a lower DPI will look really nice. On granite, you can stick with 260, 250. That looks really, really nice on granite just because of the speckles in there. Um, but for the glass, I'm going to stick with the 360 and I'm going to head, go ahead and hit OK when I'm ready. And so everything should be good to go there. We are sized to the 8x10 because that was the size of my project in Corel. The last thing we're going to need to do is make sure that our cut, our cut and engrave layers are set correctly. Now because this is an image, it is already set as an engrave layer. We don't have to worry about it cutting on the glass. Obviously, a CO2 laser cannot cut through glass anyway, so it's not anything we want to mess with. If we double click on that, we can pull up our different settings and all of that in there. You can see we have our Jarvis set, so that's all good. And all we need to do is change our speed and our power. I did do a little bit of testing beforehand to see what worked, and I did find that the speed of 5 and the max power of 14.5 
but the min power of 10 is what really, really worked for our 100 watt machines. Once you have everything set there, you can go ahead and hit OK. Make sure your origin is set to where you want it to be, and then you can just go ahead and send that to the machine.